song or something. You know what I mean? Let's Amen. sing a song. Huh? Amen. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I should have quit serving him till I die. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I was alone and idle. I was a sinner too. I heard a voice from heaven saying there is work to do. I took the master's hand and I joined the heavenly band. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I shouldn't quit serving him till I die. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I left my friends and kindred bound for the promised land. The grace of God upon me, the Bible in my hand. And in the highways I trod, crying, sinners come to God. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I shouldn't quit serving him till I die. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. For a long time I traveled down along the lonely road. Oh, then I heard about Jesus. What a wonderful hour. I'm so glad that I found out he would bring me out and his saving power. Thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin. I've been washed in the blood of Jesus. I've been born again. Hallelujah. Say, 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 my wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I found out he would bring me out and show me the way. Like a word out of prison that's taken its flight. Like a blind man that God. Beggar, about fortune and fame. I'm so glad that I found out he would bring me out through his holy name. So thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin. I've been washed in the blood of Jesus. I've been born again. Hallelujah. By his wonderful grace, I'm so glad that I found out he would bring me out and show me the way. I'm so glad that I found out he would bring me out and show me the Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He is loosening the lightning of his terrible swift force. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. 
glory, glory, hallelujah, His truth is marching on. You know, folks, that's speaking about in the book of Revelation that Jesus is coming back in the fierceness of the wrath to tread out the great wine press of God. That's right. It talks about there where Jesus will stomp out the grape in the great wine press. And the blood shall flow up to the horse's bridle. For men like this that hold the truth of God in unrighteousness, those that would mock the preachers, those that would mock the messengers of the Most High God, those that would raise a hand against Jehovah, those that would blaspheme the name of Jesus Christ, Claiming that they're Christians and living a lie, living like the devil. Jesus Christ is coming back to stomp out those grapes in the great wine press. The Bible says that the blood shall flow to the horse's bridle for 1,600 furloughs. Folks, that blood is going to fill up the valley of Megiddo. That's called the battle of Armageddon when the nations will rise against the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. And the sword of truth will protrude from his mouth and he'll strike them dead. He'll strike those spirits dead. And rightfully so. Anyone that cares, raise up arms against the Lord Jesus Christ and his mighty army. Well, the Bible says that he's coming back, folks. He's coming back with tens of thousands of his saints. He's coming back in flaming fire to take vengeance upon those that know not God. To take vengeance. To take vengeance. Is that right, preacher? He's coming back in love. He's coming back because he loves everybody. No, he's coming back in vengeance. He's coming back in vengeance. To take vengeance upon those that do not know God and that obey not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are you folks obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ? How many of y'all consider yourself Christians down here today? How many of y'all consider yourself Christians? How much time do you give to God a week? How much time do you give to God throughout the day? I'd wager to say that many of you all give more time to your TV. That idol up on its little pedestal that you bow down to. And you watch your devil vision shows. That you're, you get more time to the television, you get more time to your video games, and to your fantasies than you get to the Lord God. You know, the Lord will share His glory with no man. The Lord will share His glory with nobody, including those actors in Hollywood, including those video game designers. He will share His glory with no man. And that's called idolatry, folks. Now we see it in the Ten Commandments. It says to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and strength. My brother, that's not true. It says that you should worship the Lord God and Him only. It says that you should not have any graven images, but the one true God. There's only one true God. No graven images, no other gods besides Him. And many of y'all have created gods like unto yourself. Many of y'all say, that's not the Jesus that I follow. The Jesus that I follow, He doesn't judge anyone. He wouldn't come out here and judge anyone. Many of y'all say that Jesus doesn't judge at all. But the Bible says that He's appointed a day in which He will judge the world in righteousness. That He will judge the world in righteousness by that man who He has ordained. And has given us the church and that He has raised Him from the dead. Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead and He will judge the quick and the dead. He's going to judge every one of you all one day. Hallelujah. How are you going to stand in the sight of God? Will you stand in the sight of God? John, the most trusted, one of the most trusted uh, the disciples of Jesus Christ, he referred to himself as the disciple that Jesus loved. During the Great Supper, he laid his head upon the breast of Jesus. And there was nothing perverse about it. 
There was no, there was nothing perverse. Those who were quick in mind, they would quit the scripture to their own destruction. But he had an intimacy with the Lord Jesus Christ. And he wanted to be close to him. He embraced him. As his Lord and his Savior. The very John, the disciple that Jesus loved, in the book of Revelation, when he was given a revelation from the Lord Jesus Christ, it says that we would see him with parents that were white like wolves and eyes of flaming fire. But since he fell, as he said he was dead. He trembled in the sight of a holy God. That one that was very close to him, he fell as a dead man in fear. How will you stand on the day of judgment? The Bible says in Hebrews 9 and 27, that it is appointed that the man wants to die. Wants to die. And after this comes the judgment. You will stand in judgment. And I say that term loosely. For you will not stand, but you'll be on your face. You'll stand before a holy God, trembling with fear. Amen. Many of y'all say, I don't believe in this God you believe in. Sure you do. Look at creation, folks. It testifies that there's a creator. Right. The fool is saying that hearts are in no God. You believe in God, but you hold the truth in unrighteousness. And you'll all stand before him one day in judgment. To give account for his God, every word, every deed. He's going to call everything into account, folks. Even those things that you think you do in secret. And you're going to lie prostrate before that holy God. You're going to tremble. The Bible says that the devil believes and they tremble. At the name of Jesus Christ, they tremble. Lord God. You're going to come under judgment of God. The Bible says about God in the book of Luke, where he says, Bring forth, therefore, these mine enemies and slay them before me. He said, Bring forth, therefore, these mine enemies that would not have me to reign over them. Many of y'all don't want anything to do with Jesus. Because you're not ready to leave this life of iniquity. You enjoy your sin too much. Your drunkenness, your idolatry, your adultery, your fornication, sex outside of marriage. If you're willing to give up the whole ocean for one drop of water. For this little short season of life. James says, what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little while and then it's gone. Think about it, folks. Are you willing to give up the whole beach for one grain of sand? Are you willing to give up all of eternity for this short time that you have in this world? A lot of people walk up and down the sidewalk. I've even heard it tonight. That we are in hell. Many people say this is hell. I would say they're right in some aspects. And, and in this aspect, it's the way that they're lying is because for the Christian, this is the closest thing that we'll ever see to hell, this life. But Jesus said about the Christian, He said, all those who live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Our lives are not meant to be a great life. We're not promised a good life. We're promised suffering. We're pro uh, a promised torment. We're promised persecution in the Lord Jesus Christ. But we'll lay it all down and we'll deny ourselves to take up our cross of suffering and follow Jesus. Are you willing to lay down your life to deny yourself the pleasures of this world and take up your cross and follow Jesus? Because I tell you what, folks, if you're not willing to deny yourself and to follow Jesus, then you'll not have a part in the kingdom of God. You know, folks, the Bible says that God has given him a name. A name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, not the name of Buddha, 
Not the name of Christmas. Not the name of Ron L. Hubbard or Ellen White, Joseph Smith, but the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Are you folks ready to bow the knee to Jesus? Says every knee shall bow. But God, God is not a, a liar. He's, he's not a man that he should lie. His word is truth. It says that every knee shall bow. Every knee shall bow. Amen. In heaven and upon the earth and things under the earth. And every tongue, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. To the glory of God the Father. So folks, it goes without saying that God's word is true. And it, it says every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess. If you've not done it in this life, you will do it when you are before God on that day of judgment. And it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late. Now is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow, not in eternity, not on the day of judgment. Now is the day of salvation. Today is the day to repent. To put your sin behind you. To turn away from sin and turn to the Lord God. To repent toward God and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what your life is. That's what your life is. It's a joke. Life's a joke. Problem is, folks, as many of y'all, you keep putting this off. You keep putting it off. Y'all don't, you don't, you don't even think about eternity. You don't even think about when this life is going to end. You think you've got another 75 years. That's right. But, the, but tomorrow's promised to no man, folks. You've not been promised tomorrow. There's a lot of people that were alive yesterday that are not here today. So right now, they could be in hell, folks. Many of your family members that have passed and gone on, they're in hell today. In the Bible, I've got many family members that are in hell today. And the Bible says, out of Jesus' own mouth, the wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in there at. But straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leadeth to everlasting life, and very few will go therein. That means most people are in hell. A lot of people they were knocking the preachers out last week or last month, last year. Maybe when we were in Mardi Gras. Maybe they were mocking us then. They're not here today, but they're in a devil's hell. And they're crying out for mercy. But that time of mercy is gone. And the time of judgment is coming. So Lazarus and the rich man. The Lazarus that said died. And he was carried away by the angels. Because he went to the kingdom of God. He was carried away by the angels after he died. And then it speaks about the rich man. He had everything he wanted in his life. And the Bible says that he died and he was buried. God's going to kill you, sinner. He was buried. So his body was laid in the grave. And then the next thing it says is that he, in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. His body was in the grave, but his soul was in hell. His spirit was in hell. And he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. And he said, Father Abraham, can you send Lazarus with a drop of water on his fingers to put it on my tongue, for I'm in torment and he's plain. He was in pain, he was in torment. He had memories. He knew who Lazarus was. He knew that Lazarus in this life, he had nothing. While the rich man had everything. But all of a sudden, the tables have turned. The tables have turned. To Lazarus, he must have been a righteous man. And he was in Abraham's bosom. While this rich man was in torment in hell. He was in torment in hell. So folks, where will you be when you take that last breath? Where will you be tomorrow? 
Tomorrow's not a guarantee to any of you. I don't care how young you are. There's no guarantees that you're not going to get uh, ran over on the way home by a semi truck out here on I-4. There's no guarantee that you're not going to get caught in crossfire. Maybe a drive-by shooting. Who knows, folks? There's millions of ways that you can die. And people die every day. People die every second, folks. The number is staggering. Tomorrow's not promised to you. You keep putting off making a decision for Christ. Thinking that you've got a long while yet. You can just enjoy this season of sin. The Bible says that sin is pleasurable for a season and in the end it leads to death. You want to enjoy this season of sin. You keep putting off God and putting off God. Sooner or sooner or later, you're not going to be able to put off God anymore. Because you're going to be struck down, you're going to be destroyed, you're going to be laid in the grave, and the next thing you know is you're going to be before a holy God who's going to judge you for every thought, word, and deed. And if you've not been washed clean by the blood of Jesus, if you've not repented and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you've not been born again, unless a man is born again, you cannot be the kingdom of God. If you've not done these things, folks, you'll be judged by a holy God as a sinner. Wicked. You're going to be judged as a sinner, and you're going to be cast into hellfire as a sinner. The Bible says the lake of fire, which is the second death. You see, folks, those who reject God's love in this life, if you keep rejecting God's love, what you're going to receive is His wrath. And His wrath is stored up for you. Many of y'all might not see it in this life. You might not be here when God pours out His bowls of wrath, spoken of in the book of Revelation. But you'll see His wrath on that day, folks. When He says, call forth... Bring forth, therefore, those mine enemies that would not have me to reign over them and slay them before me. He says he'll call forth his angels and he'll say, bind them hand and foot, cast them into the lake of fire. The lake of fire, which is the second death, folks. For those that are born again, we've got one death to face. One death, one time we'll die. And we'll wake up, we'll open our eyes, and we'll see our Savior. But those who have not been born again, washed in the blood of Jesus, have no life abiding within them. They'll die twice, folks. They'll die in this world, and then they'll die in the eternal lake of fire. Just got one more thing to speak about real quick, guys. I'll be done. The other day I heard in the news, folks, about a soldier in the United States Army National Guard in Arkansas. This was an NCO. He'd been uh, deployed over to Iraq. And he underwent a bad heat casualty, folks. And I can tell you, I'm a retired soldier. I've retired with the United States Army. I was an infantryman. I've got deployments to Iraq and I've got deployments to Afghanistan. I can tell you, folks, from experience that the gear that these soldiers and these Marines wear, it's heavy. It's heavy and it's hot. We usually got about a 35 to 45 pound set of body armor on, and on top of that, you've got your IBC, your individual, uh, uh, your IBA, your, your body armor, your uh, rack, where you've got all your ammunition, usually 210 pounds of M4 ammunition. And if you're not a saw gunner, maybe you're a saw gunner or a 240 gunner, you've got a heavy ammunition belt. Maybe you're packing around a 26 pound 240. And then you've got a 75 pound rucksack on your back on top of that. So you're carrying the weight of a full grown man on top of you. Well this NCO in the Arkansas Army National Guard, he died as a heat casualty out on the range. He got hot, extremely hot after being out on the range for eight hours. And he got to the point where he was sweat profusely and shed his hair. They put him in an air conditioned ambulance. And they were trying to give him water and liquids to cool him down. Now when they got him out of the ambulance, they was putting him on life flight. They picked him up. He couldn't even stand up on his own. 
So they put ice sheets on them. These are sheets that are soaked in ice water. Just to cool down the core body temperature. When they put those ice sheets on the folks, he vomited. And then he collapsed. He went unconscious. Unfortunately, this man never woke up. He died on the way to the hospital in route. Died in the heat casualty. And you know, I just couldn't shake the thought out of my mind. He's a father of five. He's got five children and a wife at home. I couldn't shake the thought that I hope this man knew Jesus Christ. I hope he was washed from the blood. He washed with the blood of Jesus, free from his sin. And he knew God and God knew him. Because I hate to think about this man who has died as a heat casualty. His inside roasted. Only for him to wake up in hell. Being in torment in the flames of hell. So that's an eternity. The short time that he makes himself upon this earth. And the heat casualty. It won't compare to nothing. Folks, after you've spent a thousand years in hell, you've just begun. It goes on eternally. No end. No end in sight. God's wrath. Repent. Repent. No. Today, folks, repent. Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus today and be saved. That's right. All right, folks, this was my last preach of the day, and uh, we were nearing the end of the day. I had several individuals come up to me after the preach and wanted to speak with me. Uh, this here was Chris, and he is a pagan, uh, raised Catholic, uh, ironically enough, uh, also pagan. And he was very humble with his questions. Uh, his uh, Really, the gist of all his questions were about the character of God and how God uh, could... Uh, take this individual away from his five children and I explained to him that God created uh, man you know we live in a fallen world and this world is uh, sickness disease and death and uh, brought on by sin you know and uh, we have free will choice and a lot of times the decisions we make affects other individuals and uh, there's outsider circumstances, you know, I don't believe God took that man from his five children, but I believe the poor decision-making process of this man's chain of command uh, ended up killing this man. And I explained to him that we are appointed once to die, uh, not necessarily that God has appointed that time in which we'll die or how we will die, but we are appointed once to die, and after this, the judgment. So my prayer is that that man from the Arkansas National Guard was a born again believer and uh, is now at home with Jesus Christ. All right, folks, this young man here is named Victor, and Victor is a professing Christian. Now, many times, this is the type of individuals that we come into contact with out on the streets uh, that are more concerned with the preaching and have a harder time with the preaching more oftentimes than even the sinner. And uh, Victor came up humbly, uh, just explaining that he likes what we're doing, but he has an issue with this, and he has an issue with this. And I think it more than anything, it's just the preaching against sin. He feels like we're being judgmental towards sinners. Well, folks, Jesus uh, could be considered judgmental towards the Pharisees and the scribes in the temple, you know, when Jesus told him he said woe unto ye uh, scribes pharisees and hypocrites how can ye escape the damnation of hell now we don't know by tone uh, from the writing in the bible how jesus approached these individuals we don't know that he was necessarily screaming and yelling at these individuals but certainly his rebuke was sharp and it was to the point and he didn't beat around the bush he was very straight to the point and preached against sin. Uh, Luke 13.3 and Luke 13.5 that unless you repent, ye shall also likewise perish. And uh, Jesus said in John chapter 7, verse 7, when speaking to his disciples, he said, The world cannot hate you, but me it hated, because I testified that the works thereof were evil. So Jesus did testify and preached against the wickedness of the world and the sin of the world. Hi folks, this is my last conversation of the day and this was with Rick. I didn't have any video footage of me conversating with Rick, but I do have the screenshot here pulled from the video 
and Rick is the individual on the right holding a red piece of paper and that's because Rick was uh, scribbling some notes or questions I'm not certain which but the Lord had put them on my heart and I could see clearly that he was concentrating on the gospel message that I was preaching along with Chris also so folks please keep these individuals up in prayer also along with uh, Victor because they all three came humbly uh, seeking for truth afterwards and had some great questions now Rick is an agnostic and in his worldview uh, that there may be a God he just doesn't know for certain and I appreciated Rick's honesty and his humility and he was very graceful uh, in his conversation now Rick is uh, searching for God and he's been searching for him for several years he said at least for the last two years he's been studying intently uh, looking to the scriptures and the Holy Bible also studying out the Quran uh, because he's searching for that higher power to know if there is a God for certain and my advice to Rick was uh, to continue uh, to, to, to search you know even if he's searching the Quran I believe if as long as he's searching the Bible as well he's gonna find truth in the Holy Bible in the King James Holy Bible folks there's no contradictions in God's Word and his word is truth and uh, I shared with him Hebrews 11 6 and that is without faith it is impossible to please God and he that comes to God must first believe that he is and is a rewarder of those who seek him diligently so I believe that Rick is seeking him diligently he is a family man and uh, appreciate that conversation with Rick Rick if you're watching God bless you my friend I'm praying for you as you continue to seek for truth and I pray that you find it and one day I hope to see you in the kingdom of, of uh, God at the feet of our Savior Lord Jesus Christ so thank you guys for watching uh, this is a great event uh, that we preached and uh, please keep the event, these individuals up in prayer folks Even long after the events over uh, continue to pray God bless do you drink deeply of Jesus Will you come to the water of life? You will never thirst again. Let all who are thirsty come to Him. Will you drink deeply of Jesus? Will you come to the water of life?